Hello and welcome to the EMBN show. It's going to be a luxuriant show this week. As promised, we're going to bring you news of Yamaha's new concept adventure bike and also Ken Rock Zen's Canyon Talk. Luxuriant uh, in the sense of hairstyles. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you guys to Owen Coots. Coots or Coutts? Coots, yeah, yeah. Owen Coots. Now, Owen Coots, you might have seen Owen uh, shoot a brake video with me recently, where I have to say that his braking technique was pretty impressive. Uh, but Owen, Apart from when I crashed. Not as impressive though as your hair. Thanks. Your hair is looking lovely. Thanks very much, I'm pleased, yeah. Owen Coots, uh, former World Cup downhill and enduro. Can I call you a mechanic? Yeah, yeah, mechanic, yeah. Um, marketing man? Yeah, I was a PR manager for a bit as well, yeah. Uh, commuter in fisherman's overalls? When it's rub down rain, yes. Uh, yep. And an e-mountain bike curious person? Definitely. Right. Very curious. Well, Owen, I mean, I know you're a tech man. Let's kick things off with these new uh, DT updated um, hubs, the 240 and the, um, and the 350 hub. Now, DT say that they've updated these hubs all because of e-mountain bikes. Um, it's quite interesting, you know, because people say, you know, you, you need stronger components because of the increased torque, you know, 85 newton meters from the motor or maybe even more with some bikes. But I remember having a chat with DT um, back in uh, Garda Bike Festival and they say it's not just about the increased torque, it's actually simply the fact that e-mountain bikes get more use. I mean, you know for yourself, you know, maintenance. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about maintenance. That's why I brought you here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, going off the bikes that we see in the service course, then yes, they get used a lot. Can and I, I would... stop you there? Can I stop you yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Why is it called serve? You're, you're the service course manager currently. No, no, I am here a service course technician. All yeah, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right, service course. What does service course mean? It's a hangover, my understanding is, from the roadie terms, where the big roadie teams, and maybe like the bigger mountain bike teams back in the day, would have had a service course where all the bikes, the big team coach, the big mechanics bus, would all have been. So that's where service course comes from. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Belgium it's just like team garage. Okay, team but, garage, yeah. But service course it elevates us. You know, we're not just mechanics. We're no. Service course technicians. Service course, service course. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, that's taken me 57 years to find that out. Anyhow, oh, anyhow. Uh, Owen, he is your service, service course man. Joey's laughing behind the lens as ever. And it's a very nice lens, I have to say, this week. Um, so yeah, anyway, going back to the 350, oh, 240 yeah. hubs. Um, it's just bigger, right? It's beefier, say DT. Yeah, bigger, beefier. Star ratchet, 30 rather than 24 teeth. Yeah, so it's keep up Explain to us about this. So DT Swiss developed the star ratchet system, which is their uh, free hub engagement. So you'll have some hubs where you've got pores, you might have like three pores or five pores or seven pores, and you've got like odd kind of like sprag clutch stuff, mm -hmm. which is a whole other world away, or... Um, springs. Yeah, and then you've which got springs. Which fall apart on the floor and you can't find they the They do, because they're <laughs> quite small, and then sometimes the pores are quite small. So DT Swiss, well, I, I'm going to say probably the first, but maybe there's like a French randonneur company in the 30s that developed something similar, but DT Swiss really kind of like made the star ratchet hubs, and opposed to having small pores and little springs, they developed and a system. fall on the floor. And often get sucked underneath <laughs> immovable objects. Yeah. DT Swiss developed something with really big interfaces, so there's lots of contact, so you yeah, can yeah. transfer lots of power. Yeah. Really big springs, so that you don't, it's much harder to lose them. They're mm. a bit bigger. Um, and it works really, really well. And that works on the road, on mountain bike. And mm. so, yeah, changing the, the ratchet number, I think, is probably just to help with the motor because it probably keeps it in sync with how that ratchets. Yeah. I, I mean, bigger bearings as well. I mean... Bigger bearings. Is, I love a yeah. good bearing. Yeah. I'm, I'm an SKF man myself. Ooh. What's your favourite bearing company? Uh, Enduro, probably. Enduro oh, bearings okay. I've heard about good. these Enduro. Uh, yeah, Enduro no, yeah, fun, fun uh, company. Anyway, folks, check out DT's wheels. I mean, we've used them on lots of bikes, actually some, some of our bikes do have yeah. uh, some DC wheels, they're super durable. Obviously it's more than just the hub, it's the spoke pattern, it's the smoke, sorry, spoke size, it's the rim and all that. But and DT Swiss, you know, they, they're from a, originally a spoke manufacturing company, mm -hmm. so the spokes are still made in Switzerland, or from my understanding still are. 
Um, so they're, the, yeah, they're building wheel system because they, they know how the hubs work, they know how the rim works, they know how all of it can interface. So yeah, better, stronger hubs is great. Yeah. And that's for aftermarket stuff, but they do really good complete system, wheels system, too. So yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and I'm sure we could go down a, a monumental spoke wheel rabbit hole, but I'm going to turn our attention okay. now to Ken Roxen's Rox, not Roxen. I quite like Roxen. Roxen sounds good. For those who do know who Ro Ken Roxen is, he's uh, one of the world's best motocross racers. Um, anyway, he's brought out his new version of the Canyon Torque. Now the Canyon Talk is a 180 mil travel full carbon bike with uh, Shimano EP801 motor, 29, 27.5 wheels, and it's the it's the paintwork that that they've done on this bike to give it a unique feeling. It's oh wow, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that is really nice actually. I mean, I yeah, really that. like the um, I really like the 94 and the kind of purple. Or was yeah. that pink? I don't know, but that that's unique. I mean, that's pay good money for that. But yeah. you're talking about the money, folks. Eight five nine nine for this bike. I feel like I know that's it's a lot of money. It's but a lot it of money, feels, but in, in perspective, good. you've got a custom bike, custom color. Uh, it's one of uh, Canyon's biggest hitting bikes. Yeah, I feel like it's category five bike. Ah, Owen, you say it's a category five bike. Now I yeah. guess we're getting into the um, <clears throat> EN one five one nine four. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, can, what is, explain what category five means exactly. So, without having it up in front of me, the categorization is it's really nice. So, the bike industry is bonkers for having standards oh, that aren't bonkers. standards. Yeah, yeah, we are. So, we've got you know, let's not even think about bottom bracket standards. There's a lot. Um, hub widths. You've got boost, super boost. You've mm. got loads of different options. However, this category thing is a nice standard, and lots of brands are starting to kind of. Take well, it up as well a category. They, ha they have to. Apparently, they have ah, to. Ah, yeah. okay. No, that's excellent. So, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you got, from what my understanding, you got like trail bikes, enduro bikes, downhill bikes. They need to have componentry which is built for purpose. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah. Some, some, uh, that's a simple, very massive simplification. No, 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 it is. And uh, effectively, there's like certain levels of like literally height of drops, height of jumps, n sort of like number of times you'll do those. Yeah, well, I, I'll need to have a low category bike because I don't do jumps, so I'll be fine, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you would be, yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Look at him laughing. <laughs> uh, so, that, um, talking about weights and measures, now this bike comes, as I mentioned, with a Shimano EP801 motor, but also the possibility of having a 720 watt hour battery in there or a 900 watt hour battery. Uh, the average weight of this bike, 24 kilos, uh, coil shock, Zeb Ultimate Fork in it. It's a proper full-on big tin bike. You know what's interesting about the 720 and 900 watt hour batteries, you like this, is that I think you need a totally different suspension setup because the center of mass, imagine you got a 900 yeah. and you got a 720. Because the 900 extends longer, there's more weight in the front of the bike. So I think you need to pick the front of the bike up a bit more, different mm -hmm. suspension settings. Well, yeah, and that would affect the rear as well, because if you're going to balance it Absolutely, out, yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, I hadn't um, thought that. And also, this has got the bottle, so maybe the you bottle, could, the bottle. So, but maybe you could play. You know so you more could... about this bike than you're, you're than you letting on, don't you? No, no, not at all. No, but I mean, what you could do is you could, like, if you were going to run the short about, like, you'd set it up with a big battery, but you're like, I'm going to mm -hmm. go out with a short battery. Maybe you yeah. can fill the water bowl. You could and, do, and then that would rebalance the suspension again. That Fed is that's pretty lateral thinking. That well, you're right. Yeah. You're, you're dead right. You're yeah. dead right, uh, folks. Let's know what you think of uh, the Ken Roxon '94 Canyon Talk. I think it's a stunner. Uh, moving on now to uh, Cannondale have launched a new Motero Neo Lab 71 EMTB. Now this is talking about luxuriant. I think the paint job of this is pretty luxuriant too. So two yeah. bikes which are pretty stunning looking bikes. This bike is actually a 150 mil travel, but you did notice it comes in 172, did you say? I think they do a long travel version of the Motero, which has got 170, does, 165. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think this is their like a sort of racy one, a bit like. Yeah, the Lab 71, because it's got actually the um, the Bosch CX Race Limited Edition motor in it. For those of you who don't know about the CX Race Limited Edition motor, it actually chucks all the power up front. So rather than having power through the range of the CX, it gives you everything, you know, in a very oh, short right. space of time. Yeah, it's a handful. Okay, it's yeah, a handful yeah. of a motor. 
uh, Axis XS drivetrain, 750 watt hour battery, zip motor wheels, talking about wheels on the show. Okay, nice. Big fan of the zip motors. I think the flex stiffness balance of those wheels is absolutely fantastic. Uh, obviously comes the price this bike going. I mean, yeah. this is now 11,500 pounds. It's almost 3,000 pounds more than the Canyon. Yeah. It's a lot, right? It is, but the, the Lab 71 is limited edition. And well, minus, so is the Roxen bike limited edition. Yeah. These are limited edition because they also, I think they do a different layup. I know on the on the acoustic okay. bikes, which right. you probably shouldn't talk about, but the acoustic <laughs> bikes, they definitely we, have How much should we talk about acoustic bikes? Because whenever I've talked about e-bikes on the acoustic channels, there's the acoustic been the Joey, banter. Were you aware of an acoustic channel? I mean, you're a musician. I, that's a strong word, I know, but yeah. an acoustic channel. Yeah. See, it's one, of, one of the viewers said uh, last week, why don't we stop saying analog or acoustic and just call it either MTB or EMTB? I think I'm of that thinking. Uh, I'm very happy with the MTB or MTB. I think, yeah, right. yeah, I think that's a much better way, yeah. but there yeah. is there is chat. I think your hair channels. has got some acoustics. I think, I think it I think it stops the sounds. Kind of oh, no, it could. It less e I think there's less echo in the, we in the, in the room this week. Sound dampening. A dampening so. system, Don't basically. cut it, Owen. Don't cut the hair. Okay. Uh, there you go, folks. Uh, the new Motero Lab, Neo Lab 71. What's he laughing at still? I don't know. Yamaha Adventure Bike. This is this is the talking point this, of the show. Yeah, this is amazing. All-wheel drives. That means it's got a front drive and a rear drive. It's an adventure bike. Um, lots of features on this. Uh, I think it's really easy for people to kind of look at it and be a bit like, what's going on in terms of it's got drop bars, semi-controversial <laughs> off-road. It's also got aero bars, which is another controversy. Yeah. Yeah. It's I also mean, got why would you have aero lights. bars on a backpacking bike? So why would you want to be doing this? Well, so some of the sections, if you're doing like an ultra race, you're going to be in oh, a headwind. Like, sounds like voice of experience here. I know some people that have done adventure racing. I haven't. I've not been there yet. Oh, um, yet? So do you think you could see yourself riding a Yamaha on an adventure ride? I think it'd be great. You could wear your fisherman's trousers and coat, couldn't you? Well, I've got space to put a fishing rod on there. I don't fish yet, but I mean, yeah. you could have it I all mean, there. It, I mean, an adventure ride wouldn't be right without a fishing thing. No, but I, th I think, thing. Uh, I think, yeah, Eric, um, is it Eric from Specialized? He's set up a little e-bike right. with a barbecue on the front. I'm sure these guys don't know Eric from Specialized. Uh, anyway, Eric from hell, Specialized. Hell like hummus. That. Uh, everyone knows Hal Hummus. Hey, look, it's got a rack on the back. It's yeah. got a rack on the front. It's got lights. Yeah, integrated lights. Integrated lights. It looks like it's got a big old battery in there. I think it's got storage in there as well. But yeah, storage you could pack, well. like, you could go for a really fun bike packing adventure, an overnighter, yeah. on this bike. And also, I think it's that thing of, like, if your range, like, you've got range anxiety of, like, oh, I want to go on a bike packing trip in, in mid Wales, where it is a huge distance to get to where there's no one and you want to go there. And so, huge bog. And huge bogs. Boom. Yeah. This is two enabling motors, it. Two motors, two batteries. Um, yeah, no suspension and drop bars. Sounds like my worst nightmare. But it's got four wheel drive. I think that'd be wicked. Uh, Yamaha, we uh, please let us know when this bike comes to production because yes, Owen please. is dying to go on a, on a bog snorkeling fishing trip to mid Wales. Be brilliant. Uh, folks, let us know your thoughts on the Roxon bike, the Yamaha bike the Cannondale, and also those beefy new hubs from DT. Folks, time for cool places. Um, first up is this picture from Rob and the Merida UN60 in the Czech Republic. I think it might be Czechia now, but it looks incredible. Since when? Uh, really? Yeah. Czechia? Czechia, yeah, I think, or, or yeah, Czech. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm a bit cross to myself. I didn't actually know that. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. Yeah, I mean... Uh, damn. Okay. Check it's still it. amazing. It's I want to go there. It is now. And what about this then? This is in Dunkeld. Ah. Dunkeld. We picture Dunkeld. Dunkeld is up there on the right, isn't it? It's near Stirling, isn't it? It's a, be yes. it's a beautiful autumn day. First beautiful autumn day. Sorry, it's in, a Birmingham effect. I was in yeah. Birmingham for a day yesterday and it's happened already. Yeah. Happens uh, when I chat to Neil, actually. The Don oh, right, makes yeah. me drift into Brummie, even though he's a, from the Shire. But yeah. The Shire being Shropshire, yeah, same Shropshire. as my wife. Uh, Canyon Special on CF8 and a giant trans uh, cliff, cave, cliff Caves near Missouri. Oh, nice. Uh, also folks, thanks good. for sending me your, your uh, inspirational locations this week and look forward to seeing more of them next week. 
Okay, folks, uh, time for viewer comments and feedback. I have to do a disclaimer that I didn't actually write these, these comments. Uh, I didn't actually put them in the script, but so, well, let's chuck Owen in on it. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> Let's I mean, begin. you're e by curious. Let's see what you're going to say about this. First okay. one's from, from Miggy Clark. Miggy Clark. Um, Do I, I'll, you uh, talk yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think someone should run through the actual difference in numbers, uh, what torque at the wheel that the crank length makes. I understand that it's negligible, like five watts or 10 newton meters. Well, Sorry, Miggy, that's that's not negligible. <laughs> it's that's not quite a bit. ten meters is yeah. huge. I know. Likewise, twenty mil in, in difference in crank length is also quite a lot. It's like massive. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, it is. Well, um, wait, I don't. Know, I mean, this is this is almost like a one hour video in itself. I mean, yeah, like you said, you know, five watts isn't isn't negligible. Ten newton meters. That's probably like you know, for a mid power bike, that's a fifth of the of yeah. the torque or or an eighth. But. Um, Crank length, crank length. I mean, twenty mil difference is is huge. Yeah. I think the interesting thing with crank length. Um, I mean, Miggy, we can't we can't go into massive detail, but we will follow it up with um, a video for you on on the effect of of torque and watts. But on crank length, we've actually done quite a lot of research on crank length, and I think for me, at least, riding technical terrain, I think the shorter crank makes it you, you can react quicker on a shorter yep. crank I, I i found it surprisingly stable in a downhill environment as well do you know i, I had a, a fact last week did did you know that hope sell more 155 cranks than all the other cranks put together apparently but i believe that, that, i don't it. know that's gossip or not but yeah. apparently i believe it because there's not many brands that are doing a crank that short mm. and actually I know from kind of like, I'm I'm short, I'm like 172 centimetres, so I'm not short, short, but I'm short. Uh, if I was on an e-bike, when I get an e-bike, oh. I want, <laughs> I want you, to get did short. Did you hear that, Joey? No, when I, like... I get an e-bike. <laughs> yeah, I might win the premium bonds. Um, I'd run really short cranks, and most brands are only doing down to like 170, uh, 160. Well, so yeah, it makes uh... sense that... Yeah, I hope we're going to go well with with short Yeah, cranks. and hopefully a, a lots of other companies too. Like I said, folks, that's just what I heard in a in a, an event last week. Next question is from John Summers. Um, oh, well, <clears throat> I think I'm going to leave this one with you too. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, maybe get a co-host who knows something about e-bikes. <laughs> a bit harsh there, okay? Uh, and is at least enthusiastic about them. Uh, <laughs> something more to contribute rather than just saying openly he doesn't know anything about them. Did this actually just ha did this wow. just happen? Um, this is quite amusing. Well, we've actually got a co-host. I think is I don't know whether with this question is referring to me or whoever was sat. <laughs> I I actually don't know, but it's. But you know about e-bikes. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it is a comment, and we have got a. Or e let's just pretend we're both co-hosts. Okay, well, I guess. You know a hell of a lot of e-bikes because you're the service course manager. Yeah. Sorry, technician. Yep. And you're you you've got twenty years experience of stuff. Yeah, yeah. For example, yeah. bearings and torque and watts. Yep. And fishing and adventure bikes. So, yeah. um, uh, John, here's the man. We've also got a man behind the lens there who knows a thing or two about e-bikes. Yeah. Uh, and giving people stick. So we'll move on from that and go to the last question. Uh, Chris Hayes, hi guys. I've just bought a pristine low mileage second-hand Cannondale Motel Neo Carbon plus seat arrangement. As an upgrade from Bosch Purion, which would you recommend, the Kiox or the Neon? I think I'd definitely go for the Kiox, Chris. Um, but that's like a personal thing. I think the Kiox is lower key. Still got all the metrics on there. Um, easy to kind of take off. You can use the Kiox as a as a lock on the bike. Um, or maybe even, I mean, the thing is, we're talking about display yeah, you know, yeah, on yeah, handlebars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, that's my wife, by the way. I um, in the almost worked with her. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, anyway. There was a crossover, yeah. Right, stop that now. Yeah. Uh, so, displays. I never look at the display on my e-bike. Um, so, do, I mean, Chris, do you look at the display on your e-bike? Maybe if you if you look at the display, I'd probably say the Nyon is probably great because maybe see it's more towards, uh, you know, fire roads or... I was always going to say main roads, but you shouldn't be looking at a display if you're riding yeah, on no, a main road, that, right? Yeah. So, um, out in the hills, Kiox, Fire roads, nylon, simple as that, I think. Uh, folks, thanks so much for your feedback. Uh, each week, there's some 
really good insight actually and we hope in the next few weeks to actually answer much more of these questions which are posed on the uh, the videos coming out every week so thanks so much for that right time now for the weekly question for you guys before i do it oh and how's the show going for you your first embn show uh, i'm enjoying it yeah That's good. more more That's enjoyable good. than i thought i thought there'd be a bit of pressure uh try oh, not to over analyze analyze over analyze yeah, tripped over that so uh, well we can talk about over analyzing with this week's question you're okay. also a graphic designer aren't you as well as a writer yeah you've got that's true. skills haven't you really yeah i think i've yeah i've just done just trying a to introduce different... you guys yeah, yeah, to a bit yeah. more about owen you yeah, know what yeah. i mean i mean like i can tell you a bit more about him he rides a road bike in fisherman's top and trousers sweaty as you like i mean that's more off-road it's got not the the road bike mm. off-road bikes Better. But yeah. Is this sad news about Nukeproof? I it's hope, I hope super they continue. Sad. I hope they hope things go good there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm thinking about Paigey and Sam Hill and Rob and, and the JC. Kind of, and, yeah, and yeah. JC and the whole team at Nukeproof. I mean, uh, some heavy duty things going on in the bike industry at the yeah, moment. Really big, big things. I and mean, it's... you yourself worked for Nukeproof, didn't you? I did, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I worked for for CRC PayPal, so the downhill yeah. team and, yeah, and expanded yeah. with those guys. So, yeah, I know them really well. Yeah. And, and, you know, like Dale, the designer, would come out Crikey, for yeah. I mean, those guys, training camps and stuff, and you know, some highly skilled, really cool people at their jobs. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably new proof. You know, won't be the only ones, but uh, I don't know why I brought that in. I just, I just thought I would. But you know, it's valid. There you go. Anyway, the yeah. weekly question, folks, is um, this week's question is what we'd like to know from you is what is the one piece of tech you've been sad to see go or not make it to market? Oh. That's a question for the viewers. Oh, right, sorry. Should we leave a long silence there? I've got loads of things that just would be quite fun to... That, that didn't make it? Yeah, like linkage forks. Like there were those really cool carbon linkage forks that I thought oh, those were gonna be... What were those hideous forks that were kicking around two years ago? That's what I was referring to. Oh, I thought geez. they were quite good. No. No. Oh, no. but it's like a trailing link. They look no. wicked. Oh. No. No? Oh. I didn't get to ride any, so I don't know. Oh. But hey, oh. law will linkage forks were good oh. back in the day. Oh, that was like that was leading link. There was there And was, these are trailing link. There was the motocross had some Valentino Ribby. Is it Valentina Ruby had, had some forks back in the 1960s? I'm going off on a ma massive tangent. Okay, Folks, yeah. Let's know your thoughts about what you th what tech you, you've been sad to see go or didn't make market. Let's leave it at that, Owen. Okay. We can go right. down a massive other rabbit hole. Probably a, a hair hole. Do hairs live in holes? They don't, do they? They must do. Do hairs live in holes, Joey? I have no idea. Damn. Is it squirrels live in drays? <laughs> But they're up in trees. Yeah, but yeah, there's a, there's a, okay, there's this week's question. Here's a supplementary question for you guys. For bonus this week. points. Bonus points. Do hares live in holes? Hmm. Badgers live in sets. Uh, yes, they do live in sets. Oh, <laughs> news in. Breaking news. The AMBN show. <laughs> they live on the ground in nests. Oh, ah, hair's nest. Right. Hair's nest. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nest of hair. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I mean, that's amazing. Just to be involved <sighs> in a story with that kind of loop around. <laughs> that's well planned. Like, that's... You that's like that? Beyond... Yeah, no, that's you huge. Like that? You like that? Yeah, that's impressive. Well, if you like that, we're going to move on now to the bike vault. Right. right, there's three bikes in the bike vault. We love this. What is going on? This is controversial. Ooh. This is controversial. This is the thinnest bike vault ever. First one's Peter um, in Kumpark, Forest oh. Ronda. You know it, dear. I do. What do you reckon? So nice or super nice? Uh, oh, too late. You, the time's up, Owen. Nice. Nice. nice okay. Is it just, no one said rapid fire. Okay, rapid fire. John Nipro Scout 290. 290 in Schaffhausen, Switzerland. I mean, come on. That's great. Shallow depth of field. It's bang on in the middle there. Even Joey's going to like that shot. Joey, oh, nice. I like it. 
Oh, you're just being contrary. That's nice. It's... Oh, both of you have gone nice. Yeah. No, well, he, said, he didn't say nice. He was... So he did, he put nice in his words. And then oh. finally, sad... Guys, do you know what? I'm going to make up next week and have 12 bikes in the bike vault for this... You could go 15. Paul 13, tree. actually, for good luck. Three, three. Jamie, specialised lever carbon. 50 acre wood, nice. Very nice, Whoa. like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, crikey, a bike vault that didn't have a super nice. I think this is the first oh. time ever, ever... That the bike fold has never had a super nice. I, what did I say? But you that's a nice. super nice. You no, said you, very nice. Very. Oh, I meant you can't super. Have very nice. Can't, I can't. I, uh, okay, I'm not folks, down with the lingo. I'm down with the e-bikes, but not the lingo. Guys, catch up next week where we'll try and make up some lost ground in the bike vault. And that's it for this week's show, folks. Before you go, let's uh, take a look at what's coming up on the channel this week. And maybe the man behind the camera can tell you how he's getting on with our 10,000 foot dead video, which we shot in the incredibly beautiful Valmyra to the west of Turin. Joey, how are you getting on with that video? Amazingly. Amazingly. So hopefully, super folks, nice. hopefully, super nice. super nice on Sunday, Check into EMBN because that is an all time video and some of the most insane single track riding in the world. Uh, thanks so much, Owen, Thank for joining us me. on the EMBN show. Hopefully, see you here next week. Fingers crossed. <laughs>